Indonesia, home to pristine beaches, picturesque mountains, Komodo dragons, and a city with a dark past. Right at the edge of West Kalimantan province lies a city called Puntiana. At less than 3K south of the equator, its climate is classified as tropical, warm, pleasant. But it hasn't always been this way. In fact, climate aside, the very name Puntianak conjures up spinal chills that reverberate throughout Asia. Puntianak are bloodthirsty female spirits. Other parts of Asia know them by different names. Matianak, Kuntilanak, Chodel, Tianak, or Kunjin to the local Chinese. Stories of these entities date as far back as ancient Persia. Puntianak are troubled spirits with unfinished business. Cultures across Asia believe that these are the restless souls of women who either died during childbirth or girls who passed away within just 20 days of being born. Some people believe that Puntianak are the consequence of a girl who died at the hands of in-laws. Whether outright murder or endless heartache, these beings return seeking vengeance. <laughs> The Indonesian legend tells of how, many years ago, this West Kalimantan city was overrun by merciless, bloodthirsty Puntianak. Exactly how the Puntianak arrived in this area is unclear, but this was their town and nobody dared enter. Puntianak exist to punish the living. They're always on the prowl, specifically targeting young mothers and men who are easily enticed. I just want to as shapeshifters, they can take many forms, the most common of which are young girls dressed in white or temptress with eyes that mesmerize. But their seemingly flawless appearance is marred by their backward turned feet. Most men don't notice, and this is their downfall. A Puntianak will lure a man into her lair, where he starts to grow weak as she slowly and painfully siphons the life out of him. Once a human is captured, their only escape is death. It wasn't until the 23rd of October, 1717, that Sharif Abdurrahman al Qadri, along with his brave army, were able to neutralize the Pontianak. Legend says they did this by firing cannonballs. The history books are vague on exactly how these cannonballs were so effective at destroying an entity that for all intensive purposes was already dead. <laughs> the answer may lie in a burial tactic used by people in India. If a community believes that a girl might rise again in the form of a Puntianak, a special burial ceremony is carried out. It involves sprinkling mustard seeds across streets and pavements right from the house and up to the grave. It's believed that Puntianak are absolutely delighted by mustard seeds. They can't help but stop to count them. It's likely this ancient army knew this, constructed cannonballs from fused mustard seeds and committed the Puntianak to an eternity of counting seeds as opposed to preying on the living. The city was named Puntianak and is now frequented by tourists. There are some curious landmarks, like the Equator Monument, that was built to mark the equatorial division between the northern and southern hemispheres, the glorious Masjid Raya Mujahideen and St. Joseph Cathedral in the heart of the city. Puntianak is a charming city, so if you do get the chance to visit, please do. MTE Podcast is produced by me, Niall Fernandez. If you enjoyed this, let me know. This episode was researched to the best of my ability. And as far as I can tell, there are no more Puntianak in Puntianak. Travelers are all welcome, regardless of gender. <laughs> <laughs>